So good afternoon, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. I call the meeting to order. So if you would like to take your seats or come uh, to your computer. As a reminder, my name is Peter Woodward, uh, independent uh, moderator and uh, moderating this conference on behalf of the co-conveners. We now turn uh, in our agenda to uh, item five, which is the high level dialogue. And I'd like to invite uh, Inga Anderson, Executive Director of UNEP to address the meeting. Inga, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And uh, I send you greetings from Nairobi. Uh, honorable ministers and excellencies and colleagues, uh, let me also express my deep thanks to the convening countries for making this meeting happen. And of course, to our friends at WTO for so generously hosting. Now, the UNEP reports from pollution to solution shows that marine litter is inescapable. Unless we take drastic action, the volume of plastics flowing into the ocean will triple by 2040. Micro and nanoplastics are pervasive, and the pandemic is, of course, compounding the problem. But the issue is far bigger than marine litter. Turtles entangled in plastic bag shrouds, dead whales full of debris, billions of plastic pellets washing up on beaches that happened recently in Sri Lanka. We see the harm that we are causing, but the way we use and manage plastic causes so much more harm. It fuels the triple planetary crisis of climate change, nature and biodiversity loss and pollution. The life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of plastic hit 1.7 gigatons of CO2 equivalent in 2015. On the current course, emissions from plastic will reach 17% of the global carbon budget by 2050. And that includes emissions from incineration of plastic waste. Plastic pollution reduces marine ecosystem services by billions of dollars each year. But this plastic does not just magically appear in the ocean. New research found that 80% of plastic waste comes to sea through a thousand rivers. These river ecosystems suffer. Freshwater lakes suffer. Land-based ecosystems suffer. But plastic pollution does not magically appear in our rivers. Humans generate almost 1.3 billion tons of municipal solid waste every year, and yet, Many major cities lack adequately sol adequate solid waste infrastructure. So poor waste management adds to the overall health cost of plastic in the environment. Climate change, nature and biodiversity loss, pollution, plastics are wrapped up in all of them. The conclusion is obvious. Marine litter is best addressed by rethinking how we design, use and dispose of plastics. We need to revisit and reform the entire supply chain. And if we do this, we can make our economies, societies and planet greener and healthier. But what do we actually need to do? Well, first, we need to engage industry and finance to reduce virgin plastic production, particularly for single use plastic purposes. Just 20 companies produce half of all the world's polymers destined for single use plastic waste. Around 60% of the commercial finance for single-use production comes from just 20 banks. 20 asset managers hold over 300 billion worth of shares in the parent companies of single-use plastic polymer producers. If these companies lean in on the solution and come to the table, we can make rapid progress. Second, we look at safe circularity. We need to keep plastic circulating in the economy not in terrestrial and marine ecosystems, waterways and oceans. We can do this by improving the design of products to enhance their use and ensuring recycling when they reach their end. A comprehensive circular economy approach could reduce volume of plastics entering the ocean by over 80%, reduce virgin plastic production by 55%, save govern governments 70 billion between 2021 and 2040, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 25% and create 700,000 additional jobs, mainly in the global south. And third, we invest, we invest in recycling and waste management systems. 
improving solid waste management across the globe will make a huge difference to plastic pollution and to human health. Municipal solid waste infrastructure is woefully inadequate in a rapidly urbanizing world. And fourth, we increase national action. Near-term national action are crucial. Uh, this means national legislation on waste, on production, on public procurement, and consumer information. It also means integrating action on plastics across the economy through fiscal measures, through fiscal measures on manufacturing, on trade, on transport, on waste management, and product content. For example, increasing recycled content in products, and so on. It means campaigns to engage citizens in solving this challenge. Ministers, Excellencies, these are just some areas where we can act and where we must. But this action has to be boosted by a comprehensive, inclusive, and global approach. We at UNEP have been, extre at UNEP have been extremely proud of the UNEA resolutions on marine litter and plastic waste. And the Basel Convention Annex and Plastic Waste Amendment which came into operation January 1 this year, are a big step forward. Member states are forming a collective vision on a future without plastic pollution. UNEP stands with member states as they work on a joined up approach because the issue lands with this organization. Marine litter is a critical entry point to engage governments, businesses, and the public to act on pollution. But well, we need to be clear on the full range of consequences of plastic pollution and act to, at source to address them all. Because if we get right, if we get it right on plastic pollution, we not only clean up our seas, we help solve the triple planetary crisis. We protect our air, our land, and our water, and we protect our health and the health of the planet. Thank you. Inga, thank you uh, very much, and that provides the perfect preface to this next section, where I'd like to invite high-level participants to deliver statements on their national positions, especially on the desired outcome of the resumed fifth session of the UN Environment Assembly, UNEA 5.2, and related to the ministerial statement. Um, if you would like to contribute in this session, uh, please raise your hand uh, uh, if you are online or uh, raise the country um, sign so that we know that you uh, would like to speak. And that applies if you have already expressed your intent to take the floor, uh, we'd still like you to uh, raise uh, your country um, uh, sign and that will help us to come to you. Um, I know we have a lot of people who are keen to contribute in this, which is excellent news. Uh, if I could, as we did this morning, encourage you to stick as close to the two-minute rule as possible. That means we will have the true breadth of uh, intent as expressed from right around the glo globe. So with that, I would like to uh, start and first of all invite uh, Ecuador to speak. Ecuador. Thank you, Peter. Distinguidos ministros. Distinguished ministers, authorities, and representatives from heads of government, international organizations, and other relevant stakeholders. Today, we see with sufficient scientific evidence on the negative impact of plastic pollution across various ecosystems, including human health, animal, and vegetation. However, we still have a complex dependency with this product, whose ubiquitous presence in our lives has limited the options for public policies and global regulatory frameworks in order to address its impact. Ecuador is fully aware of this, and despite the challenges and limitations in terms of financial resources and technology and structural capabilities, 
Ecuador has taken a firm commitment towards marine litter and has taken important steps towards different levels of its government in order to promote an integrated and comprehensive and intersectoral coordination to address plastics across the life cycle. A tangible example of this is the organic law of streamlining and reuse and reduction of single-use plastics, which was approved by the Ecuadorian Congress, which includes progressive reduction of these types of plastics at source. Furthermore, it incentivizes the reduction of plastic waste and also fosters the reduction of pollution of rivers, lakes, lagoons and seas and across the national system of reserved biospheres. This law complements and articulates municipal decrees on the regulation and prohibition of use of plastics across various cities across the country, as well as specific decrees in our enchanted Galapagos Islands. The current government, through its mission to promote policies across all sectors of society and to have an ecological transition in place towards a circular economy which is resilient and low carbon emissions. We seek to achieve this year, in three weeks, the circular economy law through a major pro uh, through a majority in Congress, which has its focus to address the new generations to come. Therefore, we are generating new ways of working, new ways of working to be more competitive, to increase small and medium enterprises, better technology, and better communication between public and private partnerships and local governments. These are some examples of a fair and um, balanced perspective towards preserving nature whose benefits are recognized in Ecuador's constitution and the balanced development for current and future generations. Nevertheless, as I said, the threat of plastic pollution knows no bounds. Therefore, we need to acknowledge, first and foremost, that we are addressing a global threat for the sustainable livelihood of our planet and this crisis requires a global response together amongst all of us in order to overcome it. Proof of this are the enormous challenges faced by a mega diverse country such as Ecuador to reduce marine litter across its most fragile ecosystems such as in the Galapagos Islands and its marine area, where in the last few years, despite the endeavours undertaken by local governments, circular economy law, single-use plastic law, despite all of this, there are still 75,000 um, tons of waste in the Galapagos Islands in the last few years. Most of these waste come from different countries. This is not only waste from the Galapagos Islands themselves, but continental waste, and much of this is the result of international fisheries floating um, objects which are affecting migratory species and the biodiversity and the ecosystem of the ocean itself. Therefore, we have promoted the Zero Waste in the Galapagos Islands initiative between now and 2030 to completely reduce marine litter and plastic waste which reaches its shores from the continent and from fishing fleets. 
and therefore to have better and improved biodiversity at the global level. Therefore, it is absolutely critical that we kick off a negotiating discussions to a legally binding international agreement to tackle marine litter and plastic pollution with a shared vision with progressive elimination targets with and to reduce the direct and indirect effects of plastic pollution. We don't have to begin from nothing, but we need to look at the environmental projects which have been agreed at the international level, including addressing plastics throughout the life cycle. In synergy with the measures adopted and international frameworks which are already in place. We need all response measures which have been reached through global agreements of a science-based and based on innovation, which will have reporting and monitoring mechanism and which have sufficient means of implementation, including through effective financial cooperation and technology transfer and capacity building, to name some, and to help towards developing countries. And to end, my country would like to stress once again to have comprehensive participation of all relevant stakeholders, private sector, civil society, academia, and women and youth and child organizations to find comprehensive solutions to combat marine plastic litter. We stand convinced that today, Ecuador, Germany, Ghana and Vietnam, and each and every one of the member states and of the more than a thousand participants in this conference, we are taking critical step forward to protect our planet for current and future generations. Thank you very much. And, um... And I am giving a little license of time to our co-conveners, uh, but if I could encourage all others that in order to get all the contributions, which are so important, please, if you can uh, consider the two-minute rule, that would be uh, very helpful to ensure we get the widest possible uh, contributions. I'd now like to come to uh, fellow co-conveners, Germany. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you, Peter. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, it, it's really moving uh, to be here in, in Geneva and to see you all here in this room and knowing that um, hundreds are uh, online following our uh, conference. Uh, this ministerial conference uh, on uh, marine litter and, and plastics uh, and at the outset, um, I, I think it has been done before, but I uh, still want to thank WTO uh, to provide us with this wonderful conference uh, facilities, especially in these difficult times when we still have to take care about uh, each other. So great that uh, WTO offered us this, uh, this wonderful building here for our conference. Uh, and I also want to thank our co-conveners, uh, uh, Ecuador, obviously, uh, Ghana uh, and Vietnam, and, and for all the enthusiasm of, of our teams uh, uh, on the way uh, during the last months here uh, to this conference uh, in Geneva. Uh, colleagues, uh, UNEA um, discussed the issue of plastics and marine litter right from the very beginning, uh, already at the first meeting uh, after UNEA was created following the governing council of UNEP. Um, uh, and this doesn't come as a surprise. Uh, I mean, what we are talking about is already for a long time so obvious. It's not only something uh, specialists know about, uh, experts know about, but the people of our countries around the globe are aware of the situation because through uh, TV they see that you can uh, that you can identify. Uh, the garbage, plastic garbage uh, patches from the size um, of, of big countries in the middle of our uh, oceans. And uh, from that, uh, it's uh, the need for, for action, the need 
for appropriate answers uh, by, by government is imperative. Uh, Eight million uh, tons already um, enter, tons of uh, plastics enter our oceans annually. And as Inger rightly said, it's increasing. If we don't stop it, it will dramatically uh, uh, increase. And this um, problem is, uh, as the previous speaker said already, is not a national one, not a regional one, not a local one. Of course, it's all of that, but it's uh, in, in its uh, in its character. It's a global uh, problem that needs uh, a global and robust uh, answer. And uh, my, my colleague uh, uh, Gustavo Manrique um, um, expressed it in his opening remarks, uh, the situation at Galapagos, and you told it to me this morning when we met, uh, and it is so obvious that the Galapagos doesn't cause a problem. How should it? Uh, but it's suffering uh, from uh, inappropriate, inappropriate handling of uh, plastic and uh, and inappropriate uh, production and consumption patterns throughout the world. So although we all as countries have an obligation uh, to act, uh, it is impossible to address the uh, problem only on the national uh, level. Apart from the discussions at uh, UNEA, uh, we, have, we saw uh, uh, quite a number of private and, and public initiatives like the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, the Plastic Pollution uh, Treaty, the Canadian Ocean Plastic uh, Charter and the Osaka Blue Ocean Vision, uh, just to name uh, some of them. Uh, what, in our view, as co-conveners of this ministerial uh, conference and in the run-up to UNEA 5.2, uh, what, in our view, is needed is a broad and mutual global approach. Uh, from our European experience, we can share that um, we need to look at the whole life cycle uh, to stop the problems of waste at the end. Uh, the best you can do is to look at it at the very beginning when you start uh, to talk about the product design, as already uh, Inga rightly uh, said. And of course, this has, has to follow a, a management system, a sustainable management system uh, along the whole uh, value chain. We need to avoid unnecessary, especially single-use uh, and short-lived plastic uh, materials. We may need to promote alternatives which are already at hand. It's nothing miracle. Uh, it's there, for example, uh, multi-use uh, schemes. Of course, we also need uh, robust sustainable waste management. Uh, and finally, we need the consumers. Uh, if our people are not uh, behind it, uh, we will have a difficult uh, task to do. Coming to the end, uh, colleagues, I hope that we can send from here, from Geneva, uh, and from the screens, uh, a very strong message um, also, and especially for uh, UNEA 5.2, that we need a reliable, legal international foundation uh, to address the issue of marine litter and plastic uh, as an obligation towards the young and the future generations. Thank you so much. State Secretary uh, Flesbath, thank you very much indeed for those uh, comments and your commitment uh, completely to this process. And I now uh, call upon uh, another co-convening uh, country, uh, Ghana, to uh, offer uh, a statement. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, distinguished Chair, Ambassadors, Participants, Ghana extends its compliments to Member States and to all delegates who have joined us at this historic conference. As we head towards UNEA 5.2 in February 2022, nations are clamoring for UNEA's mandate to establish an intergovernmental negotiation committee to spearhead negotiate deliberations that will lead to a global agreement on plastic pollution and marine litter. Since 2014, UNEA has adopted several resolutions concerning marine plastic pollution, all with the aim of establishing a strong global governance structure to tackle marine litter and the challenge of preventing the flow of plastics from land sources into oceans and rivers. It is now evident that these resolutions have not helped to slow down the rate at which plastic pollution and marine litter continue to grow. The consequences of lack of strong action on this issue will live on beyond our generation. Today, the world is standing at the crossroads in the fight against plastic pollution and marine litter. 
That is why Ghana and our colleague co-conveners, Ecuador, Germany, and Vietnam, have brought us together to deliberate on this menace and to come up with a loud, clear, and convincing statement to be submitted to UNEA 5.2. The draft ministerial statement that we are considering today has evolved from a painstaking, transparent, and inclusive process based on key messages that the co-conveners have received from countries, global uh, regional bodies, foundations, and friends of the earth. The current version of the statement may not reflect the views of all, but it represents the outcome of an open and good-hearted effort to seek the views of member states and major stakeholders. It envisions an agreement that defines a common goal for the world, and it charts a course for us to reach that goal. In particular, it challenges nations to come together and share responsibility for sustainable management of plastics while holding polluters accountable for the activities that contribute to the problem. It seeks to create a level playing field on which nations work together to define the goals and objectives, and it proposes ways for us to marshal the resources that are required to meet the challenge. Above all, it makes a commitment to provide assistance for nations that do not have the means uh, to meet the obligations. Together with our colleague conveners, Ghana is appealing to member states to follow the process and finalize the ministerial statement and to support it with their signatures so as to send a sound and resounding statement to UNEA 5.2 that indeed the world is ready for a legally binding agreement on plastic pollution and marine litter. I thank you, distinguished chair. Thank you very much for your intervention. And now I call on the, uh, the last of our four co-conveners, Vietnam, to take the floor. Honorable ministers, excellencies, distinguished uh, delegates, Vietnam is honored to, co uh, to co-convene this ministerial conference together with Ecuador, Germany, and Ghana. On behalf of the minister, of Natural Resources and Environment of Vietnam, His Excellency Chen Hong Ha, who is not able to join us here, I have the honor to extend our warm welcome and sincere greetings to all participants at this dialogue. Vietnam has been promoting national actions and actively participating in regional and international cooperation in addressing plastic pollution. We share the views that thoroughly tackling plastic pollution requires a systemic and global approach along the plastic value chains and a global agreement is required to complement existing frameworks so that countries can fulfill their shared responsibilities. We understand that the draft ministerial statement for the conference has highlighted the urgencies of dealing with plastic pollution. We believe that it won't have uh, to build the necessary momentum and political will to advance a comprehensive global strategy to address plastic pollution and marine litter. The statement, in fact, re-emphasizes the urgency and the necessity of a legally binding global agreement on plastic pollution. Vietnam is honored to contribute to decisive next steps and uh, reaffirms our active participation in the process of negotiating and establishing such a global agreement. This June, Vietnam, together with 78 UN member states and the European Union, endorsed the Ocean Day Plastic Pollution Declaration, calling for establishing an intergovernmental negotiating committee at UNEA 5.2, uh, to swiftly start negotiation on a new legally binding global agreement on plastic pollution. Vietnam especially commands countries who took concrete steps to materialize their commitments, such as formulating a draft UNEA 5.2 resolution, which was led by Peru and Rwanda on the establishment of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee. Vietnam welcomes this initiative and is pleased to join them as a co-sponsor. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you to all our co-convening uh, uh, countries for their statements, but also 
with their teams, their extraordinary commitment to this process. Uh, I'd now like to uh, broaden uh, the opportunity for statements to come from uh, high level uh, countries. Uh, if you would like to speak, please make sure that you have put the tag, the, the name tab, uh, tag uh, vertically so we can see or flagged up online. And in order, once again, to ensure that as many countries as possible are able to voice uh, their intentions related to the statement, please again, if I can encourage you to stick uh, to the spirit of the two minute uh, time limit and the letter of it, if possible. So I now turn to um, our hosts today uh, in, in Geneva, to, but to Switzerland. And that will be followed by Sweden and Algeria. Excellent. Please, colleagues, let me begin by thanking you for participating at this ministerial conference here in Geneva. This gathering is not only proof of our common commitment to address one of the most most pressing issues of our society, the urgent need to eliminate plastic pollution. It is also very symbolic that we meet here in Geneva at the WTO. The World Health Organization, the Secretariat of the Basel Convention, offices of UNEP, and many other relevant stakeholders from inside and outside of the UN system are based in Geneva. Plastic pollution touches on all dimensions of sustainable development. Therefore, all these actors have to work together to solve this global challenge. Switzerland has implemented various measures to reduce the input of plastics into the environment. Central to this was to establish a well-functioning waste management system. Here, I would like to share a more recent example of an effective measure that was not based only on government regulation. The biggest retailers have agreed on putting a price tag of just five cents on a small plastic bag versus providing them for free. As a result, the demand for the plastic bags by consumers was reduced to over 85% in the first year. This shows that the combination of rules, policies and private initiative is needed. However, the lion's share of Switzerland's plastics footprint is caused abroad. In other words, we cannot solve this problem alone. We have to solve it together. And the best way to do so is by establishing a robust international framework. This is the best way to strengthen effective national policies 
international cooperation and private action. In short, we need a legally binding agreement on plastic complementing the existing rules as those on the De Basel Convention. In this light, we expect UNEA 5.2 to launch negotiations of a global agreement on plastic and the first step of showing our commitment to this goal is to adopt this ministerial statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we all share the deep frustration when technology does not um, support us but we hear loud and clear your support uh, for the ministerial statement of the proposition. So uh, thank you very much uh, for that. So I'm now uh, going to go uh, to, the, uh, to Sweden, please. Thank you so much, um, dear colleagues. Could... Yes, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, friends of uh, the oceans, it's a great pleasure for me to join this uh, distinguished set of uh, participants here today. And I wish also to thank the hosts uh, of uh, the Ministerial Conference, Germany, Ecuador, Ghana, and Vietnam for inviting me. But uh, more importantly, for putting the spotlight on how we can and must uh, tackle the challenges of marine litter and plastic pollution. Plastics have become deeply uh, integrated part of our society and plastics do leak out into the environment everywhere. Unfortunately, emissions are still trending upwards. Plastic pollution has a devastating impacts on many areas causing complex challenges. To exemplify, we know healthy coastal zones are among the most effective areas on Earth when it comes to sequestering carbon from the atmosphere. Tackling plastic pollution is therefore also important for climate change mitigation. We must, as a global community, drastically reduce emissions and discharge of plastics into the environment. I am confident that an effective response to plastic pollution only can be made through a global agreement. Sweden therefore believes that the Ministerial Conference will pave the way to start negotiations on a global agreement of plastics at UNIA 5.2. We support the key messages in the Ministerial Statement and are looking forward to continued constructive discussions. And in that part, the United Nations meeting, Stockholm Plus 50, that Sweden supported by Kenya and with UNEP as a focal point, will host in June of 2022 presents an opportunity for transformative action for system change affecting our air, our lands, and our marine ecosystems, which could also include action on marine ecosystems, well, on the ground for plastics. Uh, let's keep that in mind as an opportunity as we plan forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Sweden. And I now call upon Peru, uh, followed by Denmark, please. So Peru. Good afternoon, distinguished representatives. And my thanks go to the co-conveners, Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam. Very concerned with the topics of plastic pollution and marine litter. But before that, allow me to convey the regards of the president of Peru, who has taken over running of our country as he was a former farmer and professor of agriculture and is looking for balance between man and nature. Moreover, the Inca culture, which sought to find the balance between man and nature and preserving the planet. This shows that globally we have to look after 
the planet and also to preserve the human race in total. But of course, technology has really helped us to resolve the problems of man, but it's also caused many problems. For example, plastic pollution, which has been excessively consumed across all areas of our planet. The massive production of these plastics, and this has now turned into a global issue in my country. The most polluted beach is the Marquez Beach. In every square meters of water, there's an enormous amount of litter. And that is why we are here today. It is deeply concerning. We have Lake Titicaca, which is the highest lake in the world. But also this lake is being affected by marine litter, also from other pollutants as well. But most alarmingly of all is the Amazon, which we share with many countries, including Ecuador, is also under threat. The Peruvian Amazon Amazonian Institute has seen that there are many marine species of which we're not all aware. And its habitat is under threat. And through scientific studies, it is shown that these species are ingesting microplastics. And this is also affecting the indigenous communities who live in the area. Of course, we're gravely concerned and we think it's really important to foster public policies and like Ecuador, we have worked to eliminate single-use plastics, but unfortunately the, pan unfortunately, the pandemic has shown that plastics are still being used by mankind. But we are also working to implement policies on plastic circular economy in alignment with adjacent countries and we stand committed to work in South America and to ensure that we are in alignment with all to resolve this problem. Therefore we hope that the resume session of UNEA 5.2 will we work together to towards an agreement, a ministerial statement, and we hope that it will have global support from all participants. I'd just like to say the concern of my country, but also like to say that we do have a commitment with the resolution that we are working on through the UNEP mechanisms. And thank you very much for giving me the floor this afternoon. Now I would like to come to uh, Denmark, followed by France. Denmark, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. I hope that you can all uh, hear me and see me. We can't see you yet. Okay, maybe it is better now. Yes. Perfect. Uh, good afternoon from uh, Copenhagen. I would also like to thank Ecuador, Germany, Ghana and Vietnam for hosting this important conference on marine litter and plastic pollution. Due to the pandemic, unfortunately, we're not able to meet uh, in person, all of us. However, there is still an urgent need to come together at an international level to take action and address our common concerns on plastic. Looking back, uh, 2019 and 2020 were indeed milestone years on the issue of plastic waste and marine litter. Here, the leadership shown by many countries helped pave the way for discussions on how we can design a stronger global framework. A framework that will enable us to address plastic pollution more comprehensively. We need to keep this momentum going and act on the current political will to combat marine litter globally. We simply cannot afford to wait, so we need to act. Right now, we are witnessing a dramatic surge in plastic pollution. Plastic pollution fills our oceans and is visible everywhere in our environment. It is a threat to our wildlife, to seabirds and sea turtles, and it harms the health of 
people living in poverty. With global population levels rising and consumption patterns changing, current estimates show that production levels of plastic will double by 2040. UN reports have shown that there are fundamental gaps in the existing international legal and policy framework. And the UNEA resolutions we have previously adopted highlight the importance of the issue. Right now, the frameworks at hand are not sufficient to deal with our current problems with plastic pollution. Therefore, it is a key priority for the Danish government that we strengthen the global governance so we can address this urgent challenge. We must rethink how we deal with plastic, we must implement better systems for waste management, and we must remove unnecessary plastic products from the market. To address these challenges and to create a level playing field for businesses, we need to make a change at the global level and adopt a global agreement on reducing plastic litter. An agreement that should address the entire life cycle of plastic and will incentivize a more sustainable design of plastic products. In Denmark, we therefore fully support the draft resolution to convene an international negotiating committee under the auspices of UNEA and with the mandate to prepare an internationally legally binding instrument to address plastic pollution. This conference will pave the way for UNEA 5 and we support the conference statement which highlights the need for global action. The world is waiting for us to act. Now is the time to make the necessary decisions to protect our oceans for the future. Thank you very much. Denmark, we thank you for your statement heard loud and clear. And I'd now like to give the floor to France. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I should like to thank Germany, Ghana, looks like we're unable to turn on the video, says France. connect with uh, France, but uh, could I move to Azerbaijan next, please? Azerbaijan, the floor is yours. Dear Chairman, distinguished colleagues, the topic of the conference covers one of the biggest challenges the world is facing now. Plastic pollution has become pressing global environmental problem. As observation and statistics show rapid increase in production of plastic products, most of which ends up in the environment without proper management, especially posing high threat to marine ecology. Nearly every biological species is impacted by plastic waste. On the other hand, plastic is one of the world's most used materials, and this requires sustainable, long-term, and economically visible management solutions. Azerbaijan, being a producer of plastic, makes, makes every effort to minimize its negative impact by paying special attention to recycling and broader pollution, production of biodegradable plastic. We also work on strengthening the policy through the development of extended producer's responsibility mechanism that will be helped to control and mitigate the impact of plastic production, consumption, and disposal to the environment. Azerbaijan also takes necessary steps 
to combat plastic pollution and marine litter. We have made progress in the management of plastic waste in the framework of, in, in the, framework of the National Action Plan on re, uh, reducing the negative impacts of plastic waste to the environment. Relevant changes to the national legislation have also been made to reduce the negative impact of plastic to the environment. The use of polyethylene bags under 15 microns and single-use plastic is banned in Azerbaijan since January 1, 2021. Plastic pollution is a global challenge which requires close international cooperation to reduce its concentration in the environment, especially in oceans and seas. Azerbaijan is actively involved with the marine, litter and plastic pollution prevention initiatives at the regional level. We highly appreciate the regional project on addressing marine litter in the Caspian Sea region, implemented with the Framework, framework Convention for the Protection of the Marine Environment of the Caspian Sea, where the Caspian Regional Marine Litter Action Plan developed to prevent and reduce marine litter in the Caspian Sea. Dear colleagues, the plastic pollution is the issue of transboundary and global significance. Would be able to, um, to achieve positive results in addressing this challenge only through uh, close international and regional cooperation. Taking this opportunity, I would like to thank, thank and support Minister of Environment of Japan, Mr. Kaizumi, and UNEP for the initiative of tackling marine plastic waste. We call upon partner countries to join initiative of Azerbaijan on ban of the plastic bags under 15 microns and single-use plastics, which impacts the environment in the most extensive way. It will be a good stimulus for the development of alternative, environmentally friendly manufacture of biodegradable products. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed. And now I turn to uh, Burkina Faso, please. You have the floor. Merci. C'est le moderateur. Thank you, moderator. Ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and delegates. Because of the rural exodus in West Africa, resulting from the movement of IDPs owing to insecurity, poor practices and habits have been established. This has had a knock-on effect on soils, the air, and water. The Kina Faso facing these myriad challenges is also having to dispose of uh, great amounts of waste because of uh, the packaging, the industry we have, and other economic activities. Just by way of example, 300,000 tons of plastic waste is produced per year in a number of industries. Since 2010, there have been statistics showing that household waste contains over 10% plastic. Thus, we see plastic waste accumulating in the countryside, in towns. We see them polluting waterways, lakes, forests, and other areas. What are the repercussions? Well, bottles and other plastic containers have uh, nefarious effects on people's health, including respiratory disease. Some people have fallen ill, and we've also seen animals affected, as well as flora. Arable land uh, is no longer arable because of carrier bags. Carrier bags have built up uh, in cities, in the sewage system, they've been polluting our waterways and degrading ecosystems. What have we done to combat the scourge? At the institutional level, we have a separate, a separate ministry within the government which coordinates the implementation of the government's policy in the environmental and climate change sphere. Second, at the policy level, for the government, combating plastic pollution is one of its top priorities as part of its uh, reform efforts. 
and its broader national development strategy. At the legislative level, we've banned import, production and distribution of uh, plastic waste, and we're now prior prioritizing biodegradable plastics. We also have a tax on plastic carrier bags. We have efforts to recycle these bags at the regional level, at the district level as well. We've also sought to raise awareness of the issue amongst our populace. We believe that it's important to set the right legislative and normative framework, but we've also sought to raise awareness about this to enter into discussions with the producers in order to tackle the problem at its root. Mr. Moderator, distinguished delegates, that is the state of play as regards plastics in my country in Burkina Faso. By way of conclusion, we should like to express our support for the ministerial declaration as it reflects our concerns and our expectations as to what we hope to achieve in combating plastic waste. We hope that a balance will be struck between the fight against plastic pollution in the marine environment, but also in the air and on land. We need to shore up our efforts to combat all of these kinds of pollution. Last but not least, Burkina Faso should like to state that uh, UNEA can count on us, as can uh, the Norwegian Chairmanship of UNEA. We will be taking an active part in UNEA 5.2. We have high hopes that uh, the various comments which will be made by the African countries in the ministerial declaration will be taken into consideration at that UNEA meeting. Thank you for listening to me so graciously. Thank you to Burkino Faso. Uh, just a reminder to all of the uh, two-minute guideline, please, uh, because I have many people with their hands raised. Um, but thank you also for the clarity of the statements that are being made, uh, some uh, really uh, encouraging statements. So thank you very much for that. Um, I would now like to turn to Belgium, please. Belgium, you have the floor. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Can you hear me? Can you see me as well? Okay, but if you hear me, I think that it's the most important. Uh, okay, that's fine. Pas avoir yeah. la même expérience que la France. I don't want to be in the same position as France, so as long as you can hear me, that's fine. Can you see me now? You can? Wonderful. Distinguished colleagues, at the outset, I should like to thank you, but also to tackle a key topic, marine litter and plastic pollution, is a problem of global proportions, as was already said. They have devastating impacts on sustainability, on our health, on our oceans and seas, on our coastal communities and ecosystems, but they also have effects on the food system, on food resources, and also a knock-on effect on human health. Thus, no one can go it alone and solve this crisis in isolation. Therefore, we need to seize the opportunity to advance the global fight against marine litter and plastic pollution. However, there is no dedicated system for addressing plastic pollution at its source, and thus I would like to echo France's comments. We need a global process underpinned by science so that we can take on concrete common commitments and address the issue of marine pollution and microplastics. There are some existing instruments which address uh, chemicals, biodiversity. These will be taken into consideration. We need to work upstream. We need to prevent plastic pollution, in other words, before these plastic streams get into our waterways. Furthermore, sustainable management of waste is part of the solution. Thus, 
what we need to do is to avoid unnecessary use of plastics. We need to harness innovation so that uh, we can reuse, recycle plastics or put them in our compost bins. Thus, plastics should remain in the economy and not in the environment. Moreover, we need to stress sustainable development, uh, coming up with an overall framework and guidelines for plastics, which come from organic sources, mean to ensure that uh, we address the kinds of plastic polymers we use. Furthermore, recycled products should be able to compete with virgin plastics. They should, uh, in fact, be allowed to grow in prominence. This will be absolutely vital if we are to reduce plastic pollution, which our environment depends on. By consuming as little plastic as possible upstream and by ensuring that plastic can be reused down the line, we will help curb the use of plastics. In Belgium, we've already made substantial headway. We have national and regional plans aimed at uh, combating marine litter and plastic pollution and promoting a circular economy. In 2020, our fishermen ran a campaign where they recoup, uh, picked up a lot of marine litter. That's ongoing. We are happy to tell you more about uh, the experience we've accumulated. We've got a lot of data. We've got a lot of science. We need to harness this in order to take action as soon as possible. And as you've gathered, Belgium is one of the blue leaders, and we would like to express our support for the ministerial declaration. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your statement. And I now um, move to uh, EU and member states, please. EU, if you would like to take the floor. Distinguished colleagues, uh, dear friends, uh, on behalf of the European Union and its member states, I'd like to thank the governments of Ghana, Germany, Ecuador, and Vietnam for courageously taking on the task of bringing us closer on this issue, as well as UNEP for their constant support. This conference is an important step ahead of the fast approaching milestone of UNEA 5.2. And rest assured in our continued ambition to make it a success. Colleagues, we are all here today because we know that global action is needed to deal with the huge challenges linked to the production and consumption of plastics, as well as plastic waste. We are here to pave the way for the solution. Numerous efforts are already being taken worldwide, but there is still a significant gap in the global legal and policy framework. The gap is most prominent in the upstream part of the plastics life cycle since little has been done to prevent plastic pollution. A truly global circular approach to plastics can help overcome this. We firmly believe that a global agreement remains the only efficient, effective and long-term response to this crisis. Building on existing efforts, it will be capable of closing the gaps and putting in place a circular plastic economy. Together, we need a dedicated and inclusive international process where all countries can put forward their different perspectives, needs and experiences. And this is why an intergovernmental negotiating committee should be established and the mandate for negotiations adopted at UNIA 5.2, while the key messages of the draft ministerial statement very much support this ambition we are still examining the text. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, statement. Thank you very much. And I now would like to move to France. And from um, France, we will move to Libya afterwards. So France, you have the floor. We may not see you, but we hope to hear you.
it seems the line to France has gone down once again. Apologies uh, for that. Um, so I think if I can, uh, I'm going to go next to uh, Libya and afterwards to Indonesia. So Libya, you have the floor. Sayyid al-Rais, Mahali Saad al-Wazara, Ashab al-Sa'ada, Sayyidatu was sa Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, at the outset, I should like to thank you for convening this most important conference on such an important topic affecting the marine environment, which is in fact a bridge, that marine environment is a bridge between different civilizations. It has many different components. The state of Libya is calling on the international community to come up with a global framework for combating marine litter and plastic pollution. We need to tackle the threats thrown up by these kinds of pollution in the spirit of solidarity. Against this backdrop, we should like to emphasize that some developing countries lack financial, human and institutional resources. And this is in fact holding back progress in this sphere. For that reason, we need to come up with the support and technical assistance mechanisms so as to build capacity of all countries to combat marine litter and plastic pollution. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the state of Libya has the longest coastline in the Mediterranean basin. This means that we must marshal a lot of human and natural resources in order to protect that coastline. Therefore, I should also like to call on the international community to provide technical assistance so that we can build capacity as to be able to monitor our coastline. Last but not least, I should like to seize this opportunity to inform you that uh, just two days ago, the Libyan parliament adopted Libya's accession to the Paris Climate Agreement. We believe that this is a milestone which serves to reaffirm Libya's commitment to this very important treaty. By way of conclusion, I should like to once again thank you and to wish all of the participants every success. We hope that this meeting will achieve its stated outcome. Libya, uh, and now I'd like to give the floor to Indonesia, followed by Algeria and Sri Lanka. So Indonesia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Excellencies and distinguished delegates, let me begin by expressing my sincere gratitude to co governors for or organizing this ministerial conference. I will take this opportunity to reiterate the fact that plastic litters pose a serious threat and Indonesia is of the view that necessitates the adoption of comprehensive measures at all levels. The high demand for single-use plastic has resulted in large accumulation of plastic waste. Indonesia has strong legal basis for addressing plastic pollution under presidential regulation in 2018 on, waste, on marine waste management. We established a national action plan for combating marine litter for reducing 70% of marine debris by 2025. The implementation of the plan of action is carried out by 17 ministries covering five main strategies in which are nationwide awareness and stakeholder engagement, including the extended producer responsibility implementation, improving land-based waste management in the coastal zones, particularly in the river estuary or outfall, managing and preventing plastic waste leakage into the ocean, institutional building 
funding and law enforcement, including circular economy approach, as well as research, development, and technology. To assure our commitment to the Bali Declaration adopted at IGR meeting in 2018, and to respond to resolution number 4.11 of UNEA 4 on protection of the marine environment from land-based activities, Indonesia has established the Regional Capacity Center for Clean Seas in Bali as an international knowledge hub for marine plastic debris and foster linkages between the Regional Seas Program and to protect the marine from land-based activities. Meanwhile, we have more than 30 cities have banned the single-use plastic bag. Marine litter and plastic pollution are multidimensional in nature, requiring us to move beyond business as usual and push you more robust global efforts. Uh, I appreciate the suggestion to start off negotiating a global agreement on marine plastic litters at UNEA 5.2. Indonesia is of the view that the steps toward a global framework should consider the following. Firstly, reduction targets at global and national le levels are important by considering capabilities and national circumstances. Secondly, a new framework should help ensure smooth and inclusive transition towards a plastic-less society. Thirdly, capacity building and assistance mechanism should be key pillars of the framework. Fourthly, credible and inclusive science-based process which provide valid data and information for negotiation is required. Fifth one, an inclusive and a transparent negotiation considering inputs from all sides is a must. Let me conclude by reconfirming Indonesia's commitment to scale up a global commitment to addressing plastic pollution. And now, without further ado, it is the right time for us to set impactful actions and agree to move forward together. Indonesia is ready to push you constructive communication prior to the next year, UNEA 5.2. I believe now is the time to move forward and it is imperative that we gather as much support as possible to have a truly effective and vigorous global framework agreement on marine litter and plastic pollution. I thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Nisia, and your message received loud and clear. So thank you very much for that. I now move to uh, Algeria and then to Sri Lanka. So Algeria, if you're with us, the floor is yours. Shukran. Sayyid al Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. UNIP Executive. Director, Excellencies, Ambassadors, Ambassadors, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen. First and foremost, on behalf of Algeria, I should like to thank and express our gratitude to the United Nations Environment Programme, as well as to the countries which co-convened this very important ministerial conference, focusing on marine litter and plastic pollution. And I cannot but thank the expert group, which has always been very helpful in uh, providing inputs to our decision making. Thus, as things stand, today we have a very clear, practical vision of what to do in order to tackle this global scourge. Mr. Moderator. Algeria's participation in this ministerial conference today reflects our country's commitment to the implementation of its international commitments. Taking on those commitments was a sovereign decision. We took that decision by acceding to the program as well as adopting and ratifying the various relevant international conventions. Thanks to this uh, process, Algeria has benefited a great deal. It has been most enriching. 
It is in fact the fruit, today's conference is the fruit of our collective reflection on marine litter and plastic pollution. This conference is taking place the day before our country introduces our plan of action for addressing this issue. In that program, the President of the Republic has prioritised a system whereby the quality of life of our citizens is emphasised. This program underscores environmental protection and uh, a bona fide model of environmental protection, which guarantees dignity and prosperity for both men and women, all the while preserving resources for future generations. Mr. Moderator, Algeria has done its utmost, utmost so as to combat marine litter and plastic pollution. We now have a legal toolkit which allows us to address these issues whilst upholding our international commitments. We've also collated exhaustive data, forward-looking data, which we used to establish programs allowing for optimal management of litter. For instance, our National Environmental and Sustainable Development Plan and the National Strategy for Integrated Management of uh, litter and debris out to the year 2030. We've also sought to strengthen international governance in this sphere. We believe that developed countries should take on a leadership role in light of the means they have available and also in light of the responsibility, their responsibility for historic pollution. Thus, we can build a brighter future for our seas and oceans. We hope that each and every country will contribute to this process in a way that's commensurate with its capacities and the means it has available. Thus, we believe the establishment of an international negotiating body is a good idea as it will come up with a global methodology for technical and financial assistance to be provided by countries based on their national capacities. Last but not least, Algeria believes that uh, we can only achieve sustainable development by ensuring effective solidarity and vigorous efforts by the various members of the international community. We also need financing and uh, technology transfer targeting developing countries. That way we can build a better future for our future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, intervention. I now come to uh, Sri Lanka, followed by uh, Brazil. And again, if I can uh, encourage us to keep with the spirit of the two-minute rule, that really will enable all uh, participants to speak during this se session. So I come next to Sri Lanka. Hello. Hello, Hi. can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, and if you have the video, that's fine, but your voice is most important. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, video, again, something. Uh, it doesn't seem to work, but let that's me... That's fine. Uh, yeah. Do you see me now? I do, yes. Okay, right. Um, Mr. Chair, 
Honorable Mahinda Amaravira, Minister of Environment of Sri Lanka, is unable to deliver this statement in person due to health reasons and sends his regrets. I'm Hasanti Disanayaka, Director General, Ocean Affairs, Environment and Climate Change of the Foreign Ministry, and permit me to deliver the statement on behalf of the Honorable Minister. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, at the outset, let me congratulate Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, Vietnam, and of course, UNEP for this ambitious initiative. Sri Lanka considers that, an, uh, that if another resolution at UNIA 5.2 is to be adopted, it must include a global scale innovative science support and direct link with the mandate of the UN General Assembly, related conventions, and key economic fora such as UNECE. Sri Lanka welcomes such initiatives and agrees in principle to co-sponsor a resolution, which add value to UNIA 4 resolution on marine plastic litter and microplastics, co-sponsored by Norway, Japan, Sri Lanka uh, in 2019. In line with this resolution, Sri Lanka has set a target to reduce macro and microplastics flowing into the ocean through land-based activities by 80% by 2030. In May 2021, Echi, the President of Sri Lanka, established a task force for a creation of a green socio-economy with sustainable solutions for climate change with minimizing plastic waste as a prioritized function. Further, Sri Lanka launched the National Plastic Management Action Plan on 25th August 2021. Though the world has several uh, uh, the Though the world has several resolutions on marine litter and plastic management adopted at UNIA, the pollution continues to rise. I recall the MV Express Pearl Ship disaster, which took place in our territorial waters on 20th May 2021, with ocean 2021, with ocean currents carrying plastic nurdles far and wide, coupled with goods containing hazardous and noxious substances impact on coastal and marine ecosystems may not be even known for a long time. Severity of this disaster is significant enough to convince us that solidarity among nations is essential against marine litter. Sri Lanka takes this opportunity to thank UNEP for providing services of experts for preliminary assessments of environmental damages caused by the said ship disaster. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also time to recognize the global responsibility to have international mechanisms to mitigate and long-term recovery with funding, technology, and experts connected to maritime disasters, and to support strengthening of responsive capac capacities of coastal states like Sri Lanka, which are closer to major sea lanes, as well as we all have a greater collective responsibility of protecting our oceans for the future. Let me wish today, today's deliberations a success. Thank you. I am coach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for your intervention. And I now turn to Brazil, followed by Yemen and Jamaica. So Brazil, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. At the outset, Brazil would like to congratulate once more the co-conveners for organizing this meeting, which fulfilled its goal to keep momentum on this important issue. The challenges posed by marine litter and plastic pollution have been the object of special attention by Brazil. In March 2019, the Minister of the Environment launched our national plan to combat marine litter and pollution. In addition to the efforts at national level, there has also been increased attention by state and municipal governments, as well as the private sector on this issue. Let me take this opportunity to emphasize that while Brazil agrees with a number of issues containing the draft ministerial declaration, the final version regrettably failed to address issues described as critical to many delegations in the Global South. The principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and robust means of implementation. Instead, it opts for a selective approach regarding the real declaration, highlighting some of its elements like precautionary approach while omitting others as the CBDR. The gap between the aspirations of many developing countries 
and the final version of the declaration still exist, but we are confident that we can work constructively in Nairobi, in the CPR, to bridge it in the lead up to UNIR 5.2. I conclude reiterating that Brazil is ready to negotiate in the near future a global agreement with an adequate balance between ambitious goals and equally ambitious means of implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Brazil, for your statement. And I now turn to Yemen, uh, followed by Jamaica, and then the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Yemen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair, Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen. On, allow me on behalf of the Republic of Yemen to extend my warm thanks to the organizers of this conference relating to the problem of marine litter and plastic pollution. Given the importance of this pollution, we will need a serious solution regarding the very extensive impact it has. Rational use of plastic products and the lack of alternatives on the market in developing countries and LDCs has contributed to accelerated plastic production. On top of this, we have the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has increased plastic demand. This poses a challenge, which calls on the international community to step up efforts and to take urgent measures within their national, regional, and international mechanisms, taking into consideration the capacity of each country, especially developing countries, with a view to arriving at a shared vision for waste management that is plastic waste, and also providing assistance to developing countries to meet their commitments and at the international level so as to not exhaust the capacities of countries, which would lead to an even bigger gap between states. Ladies and gentlemen, it is of growing importance to build capacities of developing countries so as to minimize the harmful impacts of plastic use, which could have direct and indirect economic consequences for developing countries. We must also take into account the idea of compensation and think of affordable alternatives as these countries are not able to honor their commitments under the plans that have been implemented to eliminate harmful substances. Finally, we call for recycling and repair of waste in the environment. We encourage sorting and waste control and also for technical assistance, technology transfer, facilitated technology transfer without hindrance to benefit developing countries which are struggling to manage marine waste. We also need to have exchange of experience between countries, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The Republic of Yemen expresses its concern given the severity of marine litter and plastic pollution. We, alongside other states, hope to see the creation of an intergovernmental negotiating committee which would see participation by all so as to achieve the stated goals. In conclusion, I draw your attention to a disaster that could break out at any moment, the desertification of the Red Sea environment and a petrol reserve which could explode, an oil reserve containing more than a million, 100 million barrels of oil which is held by Houthi rebels. This is a threat to the world and to the marine environment and also threatens the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. 
this is a ticking time bomb. The president is interrupting. This also damages coral and mangroves without mentioning the economic and social damage and harm to maritime navigation. I call for efforts to avert this international disaster. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now turn to uh, Jamaica, Iceland and Cameroon. And again, please, if I can uh, encourage you to follow the two minute rule, uh, we still have many people wanting to contribute uh, important statements. So if I could invite uh, Jacob, uh, Jamaica to take the floor. Jamaica, do you do you receive us? Okay, I move to uh, Iceland and then Cameroon. So Iceland, welcome, and the floor is yours. The aim of this conference and the goals set out in the draft ministerial declaration. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a global plastic pollution crisis on our hands and the present approach to tackle the problem is insufficient. Ambitious global objectives would help us to focus on the task at hand. Action plans can help governments and civil society to prioritize efforts. Plastic waste is now omnipresent on planet Earth and the Arctic is no exception. An international symposium on plastics in the Arctic held earlier this year in connection with the Icelandic chairmanship of the Arctic Council gave a clear message from science. That is, plastic debris and microplastics are found widely in the Arctic from beaches to, deep sea, to, to the deep sea floor. Much of it comes from faraway sources. Actions by Arctic states will not suffice to solve the problem. We need to work together. Iceland agrees that we need a global agreement based on a clear and common vision uh, with ambitious objectives, suitable indicators, and the measures necessary to, to curb plastic pollution. A report on possible elements of a new global agreement was launched last year by Nordic environment ministers. This conference and its preparatory work is another important step forward, uh, step towards such a result. I would like, like to thank the co-conveners Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam for this initiative, and thanks uh, to UNEP as well for its support. I urge us all to take decisive steps towards a global instrument at the UNEA 5 session in 2022. And lastly, Iceland firmly supports the ministerial declaration presented here. Colleagues, let's do this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, um, and we are Iceland, and we will now turn to uh, Cameroon, followed by the Democratic Republic of Congo. Just a reminder that if you do want to intervene, uh, even if you've indicated to us, uh, you need to raise the flag if you are online or raise your uh, card if you are in our two rooms at the WTO. So please confirm that you want to contribute uh, don't make an assumption that we are uh, aware of your intervention. Thank you very much. So I now turn to Cameroon. Thanks, Chair. Cameroon renews its appreciation to the co convenience. We also extend our appreciation to UNEP, the host government, which is Swiss, and all stakeholders. Monsieur le Président, Excellence, Monsieur le Ministre. Chairs, Excellencies, Ministers, Delegates. Plastic pollution is a regrettable form of environmental damage and we need urgent and concerted action by all states and public and private actors. The Basel Convention, as well as other regional instruments, gives us outlines to counteract this scourge. But we note that, the, that this is a growing phenomenon and action is ever more important. It is time now for us to act faster 
and to remember the cost of inaction. President, like many other states, we have goals to tackle plastic waste and to protect human health and biodiversity. The constant efforts of the government are progressively bearing fruit. Thus, non-biogradable plastic has been prohibited and considerable efforts have been deployed to have better collection and recycling of waste. However, we are encountering several difficulties and the waste does not know any bounds. We cannot resolve the problem only with national measures. However, this does not mean that there isn't a place for national action, but it is very important for every stakeholder to prohibit the movement of plastic waste beyond its jurisdiction or territory. President, the fight against plastic waste it goes hand in hand with technology. Efforts undertaken by states to implement the Basel Convention will be a good way to address the gap between countries in terms of technology transfer. We also need to work on recycling and processing of plastic. This is something we are all committed to. As other speakers have mentioned, we ask whether a binding instrument would be suitable. And if it is, how will we make it effective? How can we further preserve our environment and eliminate plastic pollution, which is hindering our progress? However, a binding, a binding instrument would not tackle these structural challenges in developing countries. And this is why we need common but differentiated responsibilities which takes into account the difference between stakeholders. Persistent comments by state by states parties to the Basel Convention for support programs for developing countries show how necessary that is. We do not doubt that everyone understands this. Therefore, it is necessary that these thoughts translate into actions and that we share experiences and pool our techniques and technologies and to meet the obligation under international positive law. Finally, we welcome the high quality ministerial statement and we would favour it being referred to a competent body for further consideration. There needs to be emphasis on infrastructure. We recommend that consider be replaced with ensure in paragraph five. Using the word ensure would convey our will to render effective international solidarity and globalize this fight that affects us all. This would also indicate the will to make progress together without leaving any party behind. Rest assured, sir, that Cameroon is fully mobilized to meet specific, to find specific solutions to this problem. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention. Uh, I would now like to go to uh, Fiji uh, to have the floor, and that will be followed by Romania. Representatives, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be part of a high-level dialogue and look forward to the interactive discussion on the draft ministerial statement and the expected outcomes of the resumed fifth session of the UN Environmental Assembly, UNAE 5.2. We acknowledge the draft ministerial statement and believe that a holistic and comprehensive global instrument agreement will greatly enhance our global and national efforts in addressing marine litter and plastic pollution and will also support the development of national action plans. It is the best possible way to connect and drive the momentum around sustainable materials and consistent product stewardship of plastics. This will set up a process that will rely on our collective wisdom from across the geographies, taking conversation to another level, gaining further enthusiasm and higher levels of participation. Global solidarity and active participation of all actors including governments, the private sector, 
academia and civil society can also play a critical role in coordinating and monitoring the effectiveness of how the plastic pollution issues are managed. We are hopeful that a global agreement would provide a platform to collect data and set up an institution with the expertise and technical support specific to waste, plastic waste. We see this as purposeful, collaborative work towards ending marine littering and pollution. Such an effort will integrate approaches on managing our resources and allow us to enjoy the benefits without crashing our seascape and landscape environments. Fiji strongly supports the establishment of an intergovernmental negotiating committee on marine litter and plastic pollution at UNA 5.2 in the efforts towards achieving a global agreement. Without delaying the urgent actions to prevent plastic and microplastics pollution, Fiji views this committee as a base for effective action, orchestrating the dynamics of marine litter actions at every level where there is a lack of formidable action. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Fiji, and now I would like to give the floor to Romania, and that will be followed by Australia and Rwanda. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to express my sincere appreciation and congratulate the governments of Ecuador, Germany, Ghana and Vietnam and the United Nations Environmental Programme for jointly organizing this conference in response to the global challenge represented by the marine litter and plastic pollution, especially in this challenging time generated by COVID-19 pandemic, and for the initiative to take action for starting negotiation on a new global instrument to solve this environmental global issue. Firstly, I would like to underline that Romania, as a member state of the EU and of the United Nations, supports the UE Plastic Strategy and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its global goals as regards the reducing of the marine litter level, including plastic and microplastic in seas and oceans. Given the transboundary character of plastic and microplastic pollution, Romania considers that the only way to solve this global issue is to involve all actors, as governments, producers, academia, consumer civil society in finding the appropriate key to stop the pollution of the environment. From our perspective, this means innovation, implementation of the three R's concept, changing the consumer behavior, improve waste management and appropriate measures to protect and preserve marine ecosystems and human health. Being aware of the need to urgently solve this issue, Romania acts as a responsible country at national, regional, EU and international level. During the Romanian presidency of the EU Council, our country organized an informal meeting of the Environment Council in Bucharest in May 2019, when the Environment Ministers committed to strengthen the cooperation at regional and EU level with a view to reducing plastic and microplastic pollution by undertaking common protection measures and developing a common monitoring in seas. At international level, as a UNEP country, Romania is member of the Scientific Advisory Committee of UNEP regarding marine litter and plastic. At national level, the Ministry of Environment, Waters and Forest is responsible for the implementation of the Marine Strategy Framework Directive in the Black Sea Marine Region and of Plastic Single-Use Directive. In this context, Romania established a set of protection measures and environmental targets for reducing the marine litter impact on, mar on marine biodiversity. At regional level, under the Convention on the Protection of the Black Sea Against Pollution, Common Maritime Agenda for the Black Sea and the Black Sea Economic Cooperation, Romania contributed to the development of the Action Plan on Marine Litter in the Black Sea and to the Monitoring Guidance for Marine Litter and envisages to organize a series of events focused on marine plastic pollution. Therefore, Romania is strongly committed to continue the efforts and actions to prevent and eliminate the marine pollution at national level and to increase the cooperation in this area at regional and international level. In conclusion, Romania supports the European Union's position related to the key message of the conference to build a coherent global strategy in order to end marine litter and plastic pollution with the aim to protect the seas and human health. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for your uh, intervention. 
and I will now uh, we now give the floor to Australia, and that will be followed by uh, Rwanda and Israel. Australia next. Good colleagues. I'm Susan Lee, Australia's Minister for the Environment, and I'd like to thank the governments of Germany, Ecuador, Ghana and Vietnam for creating this opportunity to discuss taking global action on marine litter and plastic pollution. Protecting the ocean and taking responsibility for our own waste are high priorities for the Australian Government. Australia is taking unprecedented action to manage our plastic pollution. We've released a national plastics plan to help reduce the impact of our plastic and packaging on the environment and oceans. And we're regulating the export of plastic waste and investing in building our capacity to process this waste onshore. But no nation can solve this problem alone. We now require an urgent global response to stem the flow of plastics into our oceans, improve the health of our oceans, and ensure a sustainable ocean economy. This is particularly important for our Pacific region given the levels of marine pollution we are facing. That's why Australia has joined others and is calling for improved global action on marine plastic litter through a new global arrangement. We're now are consulting to inform Australia's views on the detail of the arrangement in the lead up to the United Nations Environment Assembly meeting in February 2022. We look forward to working collaboratively with the international community to seek global action to combat marine plastic pollution. Thank you. Our thanks to Australia and I now give the floor to Rwanda and that will be followed by uh, Israel, Costa Rica and the United Kingdom. So Rwanda. Okay, we don't seem to have uh, Rwanda with us, so I will move on to Israel. So the floor is yours, Israel. I believe we have a video in intervention. Okay, just a reminder that uh, if you do want to invade in, in to intervene, please ensure that you put the flag up or the hand up online. Okay, I'm going to move forward. Uh, we just have a technical problem. I'm going to move forward to uh, Costa Rica and then the United Kingdom. Costa Rica, the floor is yours. Yes, hello. Can you can you hear me and see me? We both. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to our moderator and also to Madame Executive Director for her uh, intervention. Um, Costa Rica would like to thank the governments of Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam as co-conveners for the organization of this meeting, which has allowed maintaining the topic of marine litter and plastic pollution high on the political agenda towards the resumed fifth session of the UN Environment Assembly in 2022. We also recognize the important support offered by the Swiss federal government, as well as the WTO, for hosting the in-person section of this important event. One of the most significant challenges we currently face on our planet is living in harmony with nature while achieving economic growth and competitiveness. 
It is clear that if the necessary measures are not taken, our actions will lead to a level of degradation of the environment which will be irreparable. And the consequent impact on the quality of life for all humanity, devastating. This is why Costa Rica is part of the leaders of the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People and member of the Global Ocean Alliance. Costa Rica is also committed to combating marine litter and plastic pollution and welcomes this important ministerial meeting. We initiated the transformation of our current development model through our national plan for decarbonization 2018-2050 and have taken a series of measures to reduce plastic pollution and protect marine resources. We have established norms to ascertain whether plastic materials and products are renewable and compostable, which allow for actions to ensure the sustainable production and consumption of plastic products, such as certification schemes, as well as possible measures to ban or reduce certain materials and products. We have also recently adopted a national plan on marine litter, which establishes a methodology for proper waste management and the reduction of its impact on marine ecosystems. We must not forget that a healthy, clean, and resilient ocean is a vital source of life. Currently, the ocean absorbs between 35 and 42 percent of all CO2 emissions in the atmosphere and also absorbs around 90 percent of the excess heat energy caused from rising greenhouse gases, which cause surface temperatures to rise. The ocean is the largest ecosystem of the planet and the largest carbon sink. It cannot be ignored any longer, nor treated as a free-for-all, never-ending repository of our waste. Hence, our actions against marine litter and plastic pollution must go hand in hand with our efforts to combat climate change and biodiversity loss, recognizing the interrelation of every human activity and its effects on our land and marine ecosystems. Let's recall that living in harmony with nature was defined as a 2050 vision of the Biodiversity Convention. On the outcome of a potential draft resolution to be adopted at UNEA 5.2 for Costa Rica, it's fundamental that it takes into account the complete life cycle of plastics. It is essential to recognize that products intended for single use are the problem, regardless of their material and the need to move towards circular economies worldwide. Policymakers globally should not only promote reusable products, but multiple uses of those products as well. Furthermore, these actions, projects, plans, or policies will need to be tailored to local conditions where they will be implemented and enforced, addressing the needs of the most impacted or vulnerable sectors. Overall, a systemic transformation of the plastic economy is needed, along with a comprehensive policy response rather than isolated actions. Tackling marine plastic litter and microplastics requires the implementation of an array of policies and technologies. We have identified challenges and barriers, including limited co coordination of bilateral funding and a continued need to increase private investment. Based on these, new opportunities for innovative financing needs to be explored, such as joint public-private initiatives, blended finance, blue bonds, and plastic offset programs. To finalize, dear delegates, I invite you to act to put concrete commitments on the table and to always look upon the ocean, not as lifeless blue mass, but as an active and lively player, one who deserves a seat at all international and domestic development tables. The ocean has supported marine biodiversity for millions of years and human livelihoods for hundreds of thousands of years. Therefore, we must continue to nurture and protect it rather than destroy it. This is the moment for a new and ambitious, legally binding global agreement, which addresses the entire life cycle of plastics. Thank you very much. Our thanks to Costa Rica. And now I give the floor to UK, followed by France and Jamaica. So the UK, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, it's always a, a, a privilege to follow Costa Rica. 
uh, our profligate attitude towards resources is doing immeasurable harm to the natural world. Uh, extraction and processing of the resources that we use contributes around half the world's total greenhouse gas emissions and around 90% of the world's uh, catastrophic biodiversity loss. Globally, we extract three times the amount of resources from nature than we did in 1970. And one consequence is the appalling pollution of our global ocean. Every single part of the ocean, all the way down to the Mariana Trench, is contaminated by plastic. And 13 million tons of plastic are dumped in it every single year, a number that is expected to treble by 2040. Two thirds of marine mammals, half of the world's seabird species are affected. And it's, it's everywhere, including in our food chain. And a significant proportion of the plastic in our ocean is abandoned or uh, so-called ghost fishing gear. In the UK, we're beginning to get our house in order. We're bringing in legislation to start designing waste out of the system to shift the incentives so that products are built to last or to be repaired or to be recycled. We're introducing a new tax on plastic packaging with less than 30% recycled content. And we're shifting the burden from consumers towards producers, legislating for extended producer responsibility so that businesses are made to take the full responsibility for the lifetime costs of their products. And we've begun banning, in addition to that, single-use plastics that we simply don't need, like plastic bags, microbeads, straws, uh, plastic stirrers, and so on, as well as introducing a deposit return scheme for drinks containers. But this is a global problem and one that people absolutely everywhere want to see fix. So we're working with others through the Global Ghost Gear Initiative, the Commonwealth Clean Ocean Alliance, the Tide Turners Plastic Challenge Badge, which is helping hundreds of thousands of young people tackle plastics in their own communities. And through our £500 million Blue Planet Fund, we're investing in, among many other things, the Global Plastic Action Partnership, building on work helping Ghana, Indonesia, Vietnam, make the transition towards more circular economies and working with more countries now, including Nigeria. But we all know that we need to go further. And that's why we're supporting a new global agreement to coordinate action on marine plastic litter and microplastic in the way that the Paris Agreement has done for climate change or the Montreal Protocol has done for ozone depletion. A majority of UN member states are already on board. So when we come together at the UN Environment Assembly in February, I hope all nations will be able to join us. And I'd like to end by thanking Ecuador and Germany, Ghana and Vietnam for organizing this conference and preparing the ambitious ministerial statement that the UK is pleased and proud to support. Thank you very much. UK, thank you. We hear you loud and clear. And we now turn to France in the hope that we hear you loud. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. I hope you can hear me. At the outset, on behalf of Madame Barja Abba, the Secretary of State for Environment and Biodiversity, I'd like to send all her apologies as she was not be able to deliver this message to you in person, which I'm going to read on her behalf as she's currently in Marseille at an international meeting of a global meeting on nature, which is also addressing uh, the topic that we are addressing here. Unfortunately, her connection wasn't good enough to come on board this afternoon. So on behalf of the Secretary of State, I would like to convey her words to you. At the outset, I would like to thank Germany, Ghana, Vietnam, and Ecuador, supported by UNEP, to, for having convened this meeting and to mobilize the international community to combat marine litter and plastic pollution. From 2016, the science has shown us alarming figures. If we do nothing between now and 2050, in the oceans there'll be more plastic than fish. In 2021, we also note, regrettably, that there are still 15 uh, tons of plastic being discharged into the ocean every minute, which is a considerable amount per year. So plastic treatment is still lacking. We have to act as soon as possible in order to reverse 
this cycle before it leads to devastating impacts on our biodiversity, health and environment. To face this scourge, a number of existing initiatives and a number of stakeholders are already committed to include France and the European Union amongst others. France is, is going to accelerate the animal consumption production across the territory in order to reduce waste and to preserve the environment. Therefore, we have adopted in February 2021 a law pertaining to combat waste and circular economy to put an end to the end of plastic. 2040 is a deadline, but things are already underway. So single-use plastics have been banned, and we already have measures in place for 2025, a reduction of 25% of plastic waste and packaging will be reduced, and we hope that all plastic packaging will be able to be recycled. So a considerable number of euros is going to be put towards plastic recycling, and will lead to new messages to look towards recycling plastic packaging. We hope to have an ambitious response and a comprehensive and coordinated response to face this action, which requires government mobilization and other companies, scientists, civil society, and all those who are able to be involved. France remains convinced that this ambition through the adoption of a new global agreement should be legally binding. An agreement which allow other countries to develop and put in place action plans in order to prevent, reduce and eliminate plastic pollution towards a clear and common vision with ambitious and measurable objectives and suitable indicators. An agreement which will encompass all the life cycle of plastics in order to the end of the life cycle, in order to reduce they, their consumption and to reduce their consumption towards a circular economy. France firmly supports the clear message from the draft ministerial statement drafted by the co-conveners of this conference. Taking into account the final organisation is still pending over the last couple of days. In UNEA 5.2, we'll have an opportunity to show our citizens once again that we are taking actions to put on a solid ground an intergovernmental negotiating committee. You can count upon the weeks and months to come of the full support of France to mobilise as many partners as possible towards a new agreement which will safeguard future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, intervention. Uh, we're now going to try and reconnect with uh, Jamaica. So uh, Jamaica, if you are with us, the floor is yours. Okay, it seems we still have a problem with Jamaica, so I'm going to go to Israel now. So I believe we have a video. So uh, Israel, the floor is yours. Accelerated partly due to the new reality of COVID-19 threatens the marine environment and biodiversity, as well as our lives livelihoods and quality of life. In Israel, we are taking numerous steps to meet this challenge. For example, recently we passed a tax on disposable utensils projected to cut consumption by 40%. We passed a fee on plastic bags in supermarkets, which led to the reduction of more than 70% in, in consumption. We launched a clean beach initiative based on six pillars, public awareness, enforcement, education, monitoring, cleaning, and reduction at the source. And we intend to further expand our policy in this realm. However, a true solution to this crisis requires a systematic global change based on the polluter pays principle. Manufacturers and importers of disposable products must be responsible for the product's reuse or safe disposal at the end of its life. 
At the same time, we must invest in research and development aimed to creating new materials and circular economy solutions. Israel, commonly known as the startup nation, looks forward to cooperating with all countries, and especially our neighbors in the Middle East, in, advance, in advancing sustainable innovation. Israel supports the establishment of an, of an intergovernmental negotiating committee at UNEA 5.2, aimed at the ambitious global agreement to meet this crisis. Together, we can protect the marine environment and its biodiversity and create a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the statement. And uh, now I'm going to give the floor to Argentina, and that will be followed by Eritrea. Can you hear me, Mr. Speaker? Good morning, distinguished colleagues. I would like to convey my welcome comments on behalf of the Ministry of Environment. At the outset, Argentina would like to convey its gratitude to the host countries, Germany, Ecuador, Ghana, and Vietnam, for having organized this ministerial conference, which comes at a critical moment to ramp up work and international cooperation towards the issue which we hear today. Argentina, like many other countries, acknowledges that plastic and microplastic pollution is a pressing environmental issue, and this impact knows no bounds, as it is a global challenge that we must all address together. We have seen in the last 15 to 20 years all the scientific studies that have abounded, which found that debris is found in land and water bodies, which is affecting an enormous number of species. But the impacts from this debris not only affect the environment, but also affect economic, social, and health activities and impacts as well. Argentina is of the view that in order to tackle this issue, we must consider a comprehensive view and that the necessary changes and action plans that are established must take into account the plastics across the whole life cycle. In particular, we understand that there are four main pillars in which we must focus our efforts. These are sustainable production, responsible consumption, comprehensive waste management, which is a main concern of the Argentinian government, and mitigate impacts on the ecosystems. We also acknowledge that there are a number of national, regional, international mechanisms that have addressed different areas of the plastic life cycle. But this hasn't been enough, and the status quo is no longer acceptable. A possible new agreement, which would take into account existing mechanisms to strengthen them and foster coordination and cooperation between bodies to work together and to have a rational use and sound management of plastics. We also acknowledge that any type of treaty or agreement, global in nature, must be based on internationally agreed principles, in particular, to underscore the need of common but differentiated responsibilities together with proposals towards the draft in the ministerial statement. I'd like to close by saying that Argentina supports, like many others, kicking off negotiations towards a global agreement that addresses the problem of plastic pollution in a holistic fashion. This framework, amongst others, will allow for cooperation and international assistance and will allow for the involvement of all relevant stakeholders because to find solutions together, we must work towards consensus and cooperation of all is a must. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Argentina and I now give the floor to Eritrea and that will be followed by Malta and Finland. So, Eritrea, the floor is yours. I thank you, Chair. Am I audible now? I thank you, Chair. Am I audible? It's good, yes. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I feel very much honored to participate in this high-level conference on marine litter and plastic pollution. And on behalf of my country, the state of Eritrea, I would like to congratulate Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam for organizing this important conference. 
the sixth global environment outlook informs us that almost all marine, marine litter and uh, microplastics originate from land-based sources. This indicates that sustainable production, trading, and use of plastics and the proper management of plastic waste can contribute a lot to the sustainability of the ecosystem with interventions that can be taken at several stages ranging from the production of the waste management systems. Excellencies, Eritrea has banned the production, importation, and use of single-use plastics as early as 2002 at municipal level and in 2005 at national level. Eritrea has also made great efforts and achieved commendable results in raising awareness of the general public regarding the negative environmental, health, and the aesthetic consequences of plastics. Nevertheless, this is not without limitations, as the production, trading, and use of plastics continue to be legal in countries of our region and beyond. We are not immune to penetration so at small scale. This shows that efforts made by individual countries cannot achieve the desired results. Having this in mind, Eritrea believes that it's high time to commence negotiations towards a binding global agreement on plastics. Excellencies, our life has been closely attached to the readily available plastic products. This makes departure from plastics uneasy. Its economic and social implications will also pose immense challenges that need to be addressed in our negotiations based on common but differentiated principles. Finally, I would like to underscore that in our shift to this to the to a lesser plastic world, special attention needs to be given to developing countries in improving their recycling, waste management, and awareness raising capacity. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Eritrea, for your uh, intervention. Um, I'll now turn to Malta. Uh, the floor is yours. Afterwards, we will have Finland and Guatemala. So, Malta, the floor is yours. Good, good afternoon. Thank you, Chair, for facilitating such discussion on this important initiative. Of course, it goes without saying that marine litter and plastic pollution have become a global issue, posing a serious threat to our natural environment, to fragile ecosystems, and also to our health and socioeconomic activities. As a truly global issue, marine litter and plastic pollution require a coordinated global effort if the problem is to be brought under managed control. And if we are to effectively start reversing the damage that has already been done. As a small island country surrounded by the sea, we evidence the transboundary nature of this form of pollution and hence appreciate the need for internationally coordinated solutions. As a country, we have been undertaking actions to address the issue in our country, including first, the banning of a number of single-use plastics, Second, a holistic approach to waste management, including unprecedented investment in related infrastructure. And thirdly, continued educational and awareness raising campaigns. Our commitment is strong and as a government, we, re we are pushing forward towards our actions to combat the scourge of plastic pollution. But that is simply not enough. No one country, no one organization, no one person can healthily live in isolation. In a world where marine litter and plastic pollution have become all per per pervasive, collection action at the global level is the only real solution. We do acknowledge the complexity and multidimensionality of the issue, but this further emphasizes the importance of coordinated efforts by all concerned, including private stakeholders and civil society. We therefore support the initiative to initiate discussions for the setting up of an internationally legally binding agreement on marine litter and plastic pollution based on the engagement of various stakeholders and framed within clear scope of objectives and taking into consideration of the different national circumstances and capacities. 
This initiative should build on existing international legal instruments, as well as regional and national efforts. Maximizing the implementation of knowledge and policy measures already adopted by various parties, whilst also ensuring that there is no overlap in functions and actions. We also need to ensure that any new international legal system provides the necessary flexibility in both the operationalization and implementation of actions, recognizing the importance of sustainable products which facilitate reuse and recycling processes. In this context, Chair, we believe it is critical to establish an intergovernmental negotiation committee at UNEA 5.2 to lead the discussions and to articulate the scope and extent of obligations. We also believe that a global paradigm shift towards a circular approach to plastics is key to the solution. Mr. Chair, with this in mind, we would like to express our support to the overall spirit of this ministerial declaration, and we look forward to future fruitful discussions on this dossier ahead of the upcoming Guinea ministerial session next year. Thank you very much. Thank you for your intervention. Um, I'm conscious time is very tight for us now, but these are important interventions. If I could come to Finland uh, and please ask you uh, if you can stay within the two minute limit. Finland, please, you have the floor. Dear colleagues, dear friends, the world is, is experiencing a dramatic challenge combating plastic pollution in the environment. Plastic pollution is a global problem, which needs a strong global response. I would like to thank Germany, Ghana, Ecuador, and Vietnam for organizing this important conference. Finland welcomes the continued efforts to maintain the issue of marine litter and plastic pollution as a priority on the global environmental agenda. Finland finds a new global agreement on plastic pollution as the best and most effective solution to stop the global leakage of plastic into the environment. Together with the other Nordic countries, Finland is committed to play an active leadership role advocating for a new global agreement. We see that the global agreement would support governments in their national policies and enable the international com community to monitor progress towards our common goals. I hope that the ne next session on the UN Environmental Assembly in 2022 takes decisive action on plastics. Finland supports the establishment of an intergovernmental negotiation committee to develop a new global agreement on plastic pollution. Finland supports the ministerial statement and its ambition. Thank you. Thank you very much for your statement. I come now to uh, Guatemala and then uh, Greece. And again, if we can restrict to the time limit, that would be appreciated. Guatemala, the floor is yours. Okay, Guatemala is, is online. Los compromisos adquiridos y met Good afternoon. The commitments and the objectives set out in our vision for 2030, that is the 2030 SDGs, is something we've incorporated into our plans for management uh, of waste. The government of Guatemala should like to underscore the importance of combating pollution by managing solid waste. In Guatemala, solid waste pollution has hit uh, aquatic areas and coastal and marine ecosystems very hard. This country, our country, is one of the hardest hit by climate change, as a lot of plastic ends up in the oceans. We need an international treaty on marine litter. The various countries 
will be coming up with a binding agreement so as to enshrine commitments and uh, policies, programs and plans with a view to curbing this kind of pollution. Over the last few decades, Guatemala has undergone a transformation, especially as regards our urban centers. Goods and services consumption has also changed a great deal. Supply has similarly undergone changes which has had a knock-on effect on the kinds of waste generated as well as the amounts. Some of this waste is hazardous. Guatemala is doing its utmost in order to address this issue as well as to regulate it. It is uh, putting in place a new agreement, in fact it entered into force in August, which seeks to introduce a circular economy and uh, the phasing out of polluting materials. These polluting materi materials and products will be replaced by more environmentally friendly ones. What we've also done is come up with a marine litter management plan. That's the course we've charted. We are a developing country, therefore we call on the various organizations to provide us with technical assistance as well as uh, capacity building assistance and financial assistance so we can better manage our marine litter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I now uh, ask uh, Greece to uh, take the line. So, Greece, the floor is yours, and that will be followed by the United States. Greece. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to participate at today's ministerial conference especially as it refers to such a crucial issue which particularly concerns my country. Greece, with more than 17,000 kilometers of coastline, with rich and diverse marine ecosystems, and with many sectors of the economy strongly related to the marine environment, recognizes the urgency to protect our environment and our health from microplastics and marine litter. Especially since uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to an increase of plastic pollution and waste due to the use and disposal of medical supplies and protective equipment. As plastic plays a useful uh, role in the economy and provides essential applications in many sectors, we must act without delay and follow more sustainable production and consumption patterns. The transition to a circular economy is a way to tackle this challenge while promoting green growth. However, since uh, plastic pollution and marine litter is transboundary, it also requires a global response. We need to collaborate at local, national, regional, and global level, set common objectives, concrete targets and measures. Moreover, sharing of best practices and strengthening of scientific cooperation is crucial. In this attempt, all stakeholders should be involved and contribute, including the private sector, researchers and citizens. In order to succeed, we should form and commit to a legally binding global agreement with ambitious objectives and measures to fight plastic pollution and to promote global circular economy. To this end, we agree that an intergovernmental negotiating committee needs to be established as soon as possible at UNEA 5.2 to discuss thoroughly all the elements of such an agreement. We welcome the continued efforts that allowed maintaining this issue of marine litter and plastic pollution at a very high uh, level on the global political agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much for your intervention. And I now uh, ask the United States of America to take the floor.
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ocean plastic pollution is an immense challenge requiring global action because it does not respect international boundaries. Um, while the United States is still developing our specific position moving forward, I can say that our preferred outcome for UNEA 5.2 is a strong mandate for enhancing global action that focuses on framing the process and topics to be addressed in future discussions or negotiations. We should focus there on laying out a concise common vision that can enable all countries to move forward, and we should avoid getting bogged down by trying to resolve complex or contentious elements that can better be worked out at a later stage in the process. As we approach UNIA 5.2, we will need to identify key elements for a resolution, uh, which from our perspective include the following. Defining the scope of the issue we will address, whether we're looking at ocean plastic pollution, plastic pollution, or marine litter, as well as its sources of, if we're looking at land-based, sea-based, uh, or, or all types of sources. Um, identifying an objective and determining the types or combination of instruments and approaches that could be effective, such as a legal instrument, voluntary approaches, and any innovative frameworks that can encourage ambitious efforts by non-state actors. Harnessing existing actions at subnational, national, regional, and international levels without duplicating efforts that are underway uh, in other instruments. We should also look at recognizing the critical role of non-state actors including subnational governments, the private sector, and civil society in addressing the problem. We should use science, risk-based analysis, and innovation as fundamental approaches to the problem. We will also look to supporting countries that are most in need to build the capacity for reducing and preventing marine plastic litter. And we will also need to pay close attention to reporting on national measures and actions, measuring our progress, and monitoring ocean plastic pollution. I would also say the, global, the mandate for global action at UNEA 5.2 should consider the use of country-specific approaches as it may be difficult for countries with different policy structures and underlying national circumstances to agree on specific actions uh, or measures. And I believe this could enable faster progress than trying to achieve a one-size-fits-all approach. We would also say that many, many non-state actors have made strong commitments to address plastic pollution, and we should consider how those efforts can be integrated to support global action. We should explore the possibility of establishing a multi-stakeholder action agenda to complement country-driven activities and provide a forum for cooperation and engagement between member states and subnational governments, civil society, and the private sector. Finally, I would just say that we, we really must take advantage of UNEA 5.2. It's too good of an opportunity um, uh, for us to miss uh, to advance this issue. Uh, we need to adopt uh, a resolution there that will enable substantial further progress on this issue in the near term. And we look forward to continuing to work with other countries, the private sector, subnational governments, and civil society to advance global efforts to mitigate ocean plastic pollution. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention. Um, I would now like to come to uh, the Republic of South Korea, followed by Slovenia and then Spain. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Excellencies, 
distinguished delegates. On behalf of the, the government of the Republic of Korea, I would like to begin by extending my sincere gratitude to the government of Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam for convening today meeting and the UNEP for facilitating the conference. Moreover, I, I would like to pay tribute for coming up with the draft ministerial statement. This conference is expected to be a great help in efficiently and productively preparing the next UN Environmental Assembly and will serve as opportunity to bring major changes in human response to the serious and urgent issues of marine litter and plastic pollution. The Korean government is well aware of urgency on issues of marine litter and plastic pollution and under the particular and the continuous attention of our President Moon Jae-in, we are responding to the pollution of marine litter and plastic at a national level. As part of our response to such a problem, the Korean government has introduced and implemented major policy plans such as the policy to reduce plastic from households announced in December 2020 and the first management plan on marine litter announced in May 2021. Making such efforts by a policy plan, the Republic of Korea aims to achieve a plastic-free society by the year of 2050, as well as reach zero in the total volume of marine plastic waste. The ocean is a common commodity for humanity as a whole, thus the issue of marine litter and plastic pollution cannot be tackled individually by each nation. In this regard, a general consensus on establishing an international resolution was made last year at the Port to UNEP at the open-ended expert group on marine litter and microplastics. The Korea government called for UN level efforts on tackling the issue of marine litter via hosting the second P4G Seoul Green Future Summit in May this year and arranged the seventh International Marine Debris Conference to be held in September 2022 in Busan as part of the effort to jointly respond to such issues at the international level. The ministerial statement conveyed the major agenda drawn from the Seoul Declaration at second P4G summit, which stressed the importance of international cooperation, circular economy model, zero waste society. The statement is also regarded to serve as a stepping stone to continue the momentum for the fifth UNEA 5.2 in February 2022. The Korean government will stay committed to support the establishment of international norms to tackle the issues of marine litter and plastic pollution and actively engage in relevant tables to further discuss the matters with the international counterpart. Thank you very much. Thank you for your intervention. And uh, uh, we have time just for three more. Uh, so I'm going to call upon Slovenia, followed by Spain and then Chile. So Slovenia, and please, if you can make it a brief intervention, um, Slovenia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to firstly thank the, um, the co-conveners of the meeting for organizing this important ministerial and with that maintaining the issue of plastic pollution and the potential global agreement high on the political agenda. We too share the view that there is no time left to waste. Looking at current trends and issues of plastics value chains, 
plastic pollution and microplastics le leakage into the environment, it is vital that we come to an agreement at UNIA 5.2 to start negotiations for a global treaty. The Republic of Slovenia remains committed to solving issues of global plastic and marine litter pollution. We are therefore supporting the ministerial statement presented today. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Moderator. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed, Slovenia. I now come to Spain. Also, a brief intervention, if you're able. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. And whilst I was waiting to uh, speak, I was able to have something to eat. So marine litter plastic pollution is a real environmental challenge, which is with main concerns for our citizens. Circular economy, which is more environmentally friendly, is absolutely essential. Spain, within the framework of the EU, is committed to the ADOPT policies in order to tackle this challenge. As in the Spain's new legislation on waste, including measures to restrict plastic, single-use plastics and to generate better waste management. We are also addressing marine litter plastic pollution through strategies, national marine strategies and the Regional Seas Convention. The national and regional efforts is not enough. enough. Global efforts are essential in order to have a new global framework which addresses all the stages of the plastic life cycle. Therefore, we feel it is urgent to adopt a global treaty which allows us to tackle things which current instruments do not encompass. There, through conference of parties, we can adapt new preventative measures towards sustainable consumption and production. We also need to put in place a new framework for national environmental actions which can be rolled out across national trends. Spain firmly supports an intergovernmental negotiating committee to address marine, litty and plastic pollution at UNEA 5.2 in order to achieve a global agreement with ambitious objectives. The status quo is no longer an option. It's not an option for our citizens and neither for our economies, nor is it an option for the environment. We need an urgent response from the international community to address the challenge in front of us. Through UNEA 5.2 2022 will allow us to take decisive action towards the future. Let us take this action now. Thank you. And I now turn to Chile for a brief intervention, please. Chile, the floor is yours. And then finally, it will be I would like to begin by extending our appreciation to the co-conveners for this meeting, Ecuador, Germany, Ghana, and Vietnam, as well to the United Nations Environment Program for this invitation and for all of the organizational arrangements. The problem of marine litter and plastic pollution is one of the greatest challenges we face as an international community. It is because of its terms, boundary nature that require an international response. At national level, it is estimated the marine litter generates $61 million damage to economic activities, such as fisheries, agriculture, tourism, and maritime transport, reaching $11 billion in Asia-Pacific region. We believe there is a global consensus to the need to change plastic consumption and production patterns to integrate sustainability in line with SDG 12. Scientific evidence highlights the urgent need for actions and solutions may be achieved through multi-stakeholder efforts. Chile is committed to reach solutions for this issue, using all of the available tools to our disposal, national laws, regulations, and policies. We have tried to approve and implement different instruments, including extended producing responsibility, common and contract regulation to phase out unnecessary plastic products, public-private partnership and voluntary agreements, and a recently approved national strategy on marine litter and microplastics, among other efforts. Chile 
has also had an active participation in international initiatives related to plastic in different fora. Chile recently established the Group of Friends of Nairobi to combat plastic and litter and plastic pollution in a joint effort of our permanent representation at UNEP and with the collaboration of Portugal to exchange views on potential international agreed solutions to this issue. Chile would like to express its complete support to all international effort that might be put in place to address this important challenge, including the establishment of an intergovernmental negotiation committee during UNEA 5.2, whose main delivery is a new multilateral binding agreement on plastic pollution. We expect that a new instrument is a complement to all a complement to ongoing mechanism and in that it effectively alters the gaps in international environmental law, while avoiding identification of efforts for the reputation of commitments already present in other international agreements. We also hope that the new negotiation will take place by finding synergies with other international processes in common areas. This may be the case for biodiversity and goal seven of the CBD post-2020 framework currently in negotiation. In climate change, New co-benefits for a joint advancement between the pollution and the climate agenda may be identified through new exchange, such as the commitments on circular economy present on update Chilean NDC. Consequently, Chile adheres to the ministerial statement and its contents. We will also like to announce the co partnership to the potential new resolution that may be present to the UNEA to establish to the negotiation committee as the natural next step to achieve effective, coordinated international efforts on the area. We finalize this intervention with a call to all stakeholders to put forward concrete actions to address the relevant issue of plastic pollution as a part of the international initiative, to reach some management of waste, transiting to a circular economy, reducing our impact on ecosystems and transforming our relationship with our planet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chile. And as a final intervention, um, I give the floor to Japan. And just apologies to those who still want to speak. Unfortunately, we are just out of time uh, at this conference. So, Japan, uh, if you can, a brief uh, intervention would be most appreciated. The floor is Thank you. Thank you, moderator. I, I appreciate all the co winners to organize this conference as well as for the enormous efforts to prepare the draft ministerial statement. Uh, Japan has been contributing key to keeping the global momentum for marine plastic litter, including the advocacy of Osaka Blue Ocean Vision in the 2019 G20 Summit and compilation of the report on national actions based on the G20 implementation framework for actions on marine plastic litter. As domestic measures, we have also passed a new law this June to promote plastic circulation throughout its life cycle. In addition, as demonstrated by companies' effort to design for environment, high public awareness, our recycling system and technologies developed through ETL policy, the statement is fully achievable for Japan. Japan supports the establishment of an intergovernmental negotiating commit committee at UNEVA 5.2 to discuss a new global instrument. On the other hand, in order to proceed with practical measures globally, it is absolutely crucial uh, that the committee includes wide participation, including large emitting and consuming countries of plastics. It is therefore important that INC discussions are scoped to promote actions tailored to the local and national circumstances. To this end, Japan has been considering submitting a draft resolution without prejudging the outcomes or mentioning in detail so that many countries will be able to join. In this regard, desirable ministerial statement should provide a broad picture to enable the most countries to participate in. As we heard, interventions yesterday called for involvement of all countries in our work. We would like to look through quickly the content of the finalized statement and ex express our position very soon. Thank you, moderator. 
Thank you very much, uh, Japan. Uh, I appreciate there are a number of people who, and countries who would uh, still like to speak. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, we've covered this for uh, nearly three hours, which is an indicator of the level of interest and desire to contribute. Um, uh, what we are suggesting is, uh, if you have a statement, uh, if you can submit that uh, to the organize, the co-conveners, uh, that will be received. So uh, my apologies if you've not been able to speak, uh, but I hope you understand just the uh, volume of interest uh, and to be engaged in this crucial issue. Uh, we are extending the conference to 10 past four, but no further than that. So I'm immediately going to uh, move to item six um, and invite uh, Walter Schult from Ecuador, one of the co-convening countries, uh, briefly to introduce um, a, a, uh, a co-convener's summary. Walter, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And once again, uh, all our apologies uh, and gratefulness to all the participants that did make their interventions and, and Apologies for those who didn't, and, and of course, expectation and invitation to to submit that uh, to to us, uh, so that we can take them them into account. Uh, we are very very pleased with this level of participation, both in the preparatory process, the preparatory meetings uh, of May and June, and of course in this ministerial conference with more than uh, 100, uh, no, 1,100 online participants connecting from around the world, uh, and around 100 participants in, in Geneva. For us, this is a clear signal of, of the tremendous interest uh, of this topic uh, and from around the world, and, and we are very honored and, uh, and to have provided this opportunity at this space for so many participants. We have heard overwhelming support for the establishment of a mandate uh, for an intergovernmental negotiation committee at the resume of fifth session of UNEA in February to develop, in February 2022, to develop a global agreement on marine litter and plastic pollution. Many many member states and civil society organizations have further highlighted the need for this agreement to be ambitious and legally binding and count on the robust means of implementation. Through your different comments and inputs, uh, both online and on the floor and in writing, we have received very valuable input to the process leading up to UNEA 5.2. You have expressed the need to bridge regions, stakeholders and sectors in common resolve to tackle the global crisis of marine litter and plastic pollution through bold and decisive action. Some key elements regarding such agreement uh, include the scope of the agreement, the means of implementation, including, of course, financial and technical support, technology transfer and capacity building, the importance of science-based solutions, possibly guided by a dedicated scientific body, as many other international and environmental agreements have, the need for a coherent framework which builds but doesn't duplicate existing mechanisms and which fill the gaps of what is not currently addressed, and also to strengthen relevant ongoing efforts with, while an agreement is being developed, including, of course, national and regional actions that are being developed uh, of, uh, elsewhere. What is central in this, in this journey towards UNEA 5.2 and beyond is the importance of including all relevant stakeholders and meaningful, in a meaningful and constructive dialogue as well as in the development of a potential agreement so that all countries have the commitment, commitment, knowledge, and capacity to take decisive and bold action. As so co-conveners, we will reflect on these last statements. And uh, as was mentioned before, the ministerial conference is already uploaded. So uh, we, with that, uh, we will, of course, uh, provide the guidance and provide the messages that is more important from all of us during this two days and during this whole preparatory process to the next steps towards a global agreement. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank, Thank you, uh, Mr. Schultz. And I would now ask uh, Oliver Boacci from Ghana just to lay out the signature process envisaged. Oliver. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, on behalf of the co-conveners, I am very pleased to lay out for uh, delegates the process for appending uh, signatures to the ministerial conference. I mean, statements. Sorry. Uh, please note that 
with picking rules from countries that wish to sign the statement. You may request the floor and endorse the statement during this conference. Uh, so in the next few minutes, uh, you have the privilege to do that. Um, some have already done that through the national statement, uh, but those who have not had the chance to do it, this is the opportunity to do so. And we can do it until uh, the end of this conference. Now, uh, for the post-conference uh, opportunities, those who wish to sign the statement after the conference has uh, closed, they choose to do so by officially communicating the endorsement of the statement in writing to the co-convenience by the 15th of October, 2021. In such a case, the name and title of the signatory must be listed at the end of the statement and also on the ministerial conference website. Government representatives with delegation of authority may sign the statement on behalf of their, uh, of their uh, countries. There's no physical signing uh, on the statement foreseen in the near future. Uh, and I believe that later on, there will be more information about this uh, on the conference website. Uh, and that's all I can share with you at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and I now pass the floor over to Ms. Titui Maila from uh, Vietnam to briefly explain the next steps. I don't think we have that intervention, therefore I'm going to pass to um, State Secretary uh, Jochen Flasbath from Germany, uh, a final call from the co-conveners to the conference. Thank you, thank you Chair, thank you Peter, uh, and um, thank you um, dear, dear colleagues and, and friends. I, I need to say I'm quite enthusiastic after uh, this session. Uh, a lot of work has been done uh, prior to this uh, high-level uh, segment uh, the months before, the last days, and uh, I listened to all of those who took the floor, who had the chance to take the floor, uh, and I'm really impressed. Uh, I see a growing will that we not only have to take action, uh, but that we have to take appropriate uh, action and uh, in, in time. I would also like to uh, thank UNEP, uh, obviously WTO, uh, also GIZ for their uh, support uh, in the preparation and in the running of this uh, conference. And I think this conference again has shown that uh, multilateralism uh, is able to address uh, global, uh, global challenges. And uh, we heard um, the summary um, uh, from our uh, friend uh, Walter Schult from Ecuador, we heard from Ghana, uh, the process uh, of uh, signature. Uh, and um, I, I think we okay, already can now say that the purpose of this conference uh, is met. We wanted to uh, garner support for a robust mandate for an intergovernmental negotiating committee uh, aiming at an in, in, uh, ambitious international uh, agreement to tackle plastic pollution from uh, uh, source uh, to sea. Uh, I, I'm happy that already, and the process has been outlined, a number um, of about 25 uh, uh, countries, member states, uh, endorsed uh, the statement, the ministerial statement. Uh, a, a quite big group uh, indicated that they will uh, do so already during uh, uh, the next hours until the end of the uh, conference uh, and of course we w want uh, to ask every uh, all the other partners that they really should uh, go back to their capitals uh, and also reflect on what they heard here from 
uh, colleagues and hopefully um, uh, by the outline deadline will um, uh, support the statement also after this conference. Uh, we um, are looking forward to uh, UNEA uh, 5.2. Uh, I think uh, we we prepared quite pretty well, uh, this Susan, and um, I hope that uh, this will lead uh, to a very constructive, successful UNEA 5.2 on many other issues, but of course also on uh, this one uh, to um, establish uh, the committee and to start the negotiating process for uh, the global agreement. I hope I've been in time, um, Chair. <laughs> Impeccable. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you uh, indeed for those uh, those words of motivation to the process moving forward. Uh, we come now to item seven, uh, update on relevant processes. Um, and um, uh, before I open the floor, I'd invite uh, Minister Ruben uh, Jose Ramirez Mateo uh, from Minister of the Environment, Peru, uh, to pro provide an update on a draft resolution on marine litter and plastic pollution that Peru and I would like to thank you for giving me the floor. We have a commitment with the to combat marine litter and plastic pollution. And the last few months our governments have been working with a group of countries to work towards a resume session of UNEA 5.2, we have prepared a draft resolution text whose aim is to set out an intergovernmental negotiating committee whose mandate will be to negotiate a global agreement to address plastic pollution. And this will be distributed over the last few days through the corresponding channels. Our commitment has global support towards a global agreement on plastics, which has been expressed by different countries during the ad hoc work and the ad hoc open-ended expert group of marine litter and plastic pollution and the high level group with the, with the European Commission on the 4th of September 2020, we also worked with them. We really believe in working on an instrument which has been designed and will really tackle plastic pollution and marine litter in our region and across the world. Therefore, in the framework to which we all lend ourselves to protect the planet, to protect it from pollutants, which are bringing devastating consequences for future generations. So this draft resolution text with, is going to be distributed through UNEP to have a look at this and should be aimed to be legally binding. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you very much for that uh, intervention. Um, I would now like to uh, open the floor if anyone wants to uh, offer uh, a comment uh, related to that resolution. I believe, um, I believe Rwanda, Peru. Um, I believe Rwanda will speak. Yes. Thank you, moderator. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, warm greetings from Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, I want to uh, compliment what Honorable Minister of Environment from Peru just introduced to this uh, uh, meeting. Indeed, we are very uh, enthusiastically sharing the draft resolution uh, if I can have the presentation please uh, upload it on the slide, that would be helpful. Yes, so, um, Rwanda and Peru believe that this resolution is needed since plastic uh, pollution requires urgent international cooperation 
as many delegations have already uh, highlighted. Uh, the existing international framework is uh, fragmented, as we all can see, and it's not adequate uh, to help us to sort uh, the plastic uh, pollution issue that, was, that we are facing. And then uh, or we already know that successful UNEA resolutions and expert groups have already justified the need for a global action, and yet majority of countries are supporting uh, to start immediate uh, negotiations. At this point, I want to recognize the parties that have already supported uh, this draft resolution. Uh, as of now, we have Senegal, we have Costa Rica, we have European Union and its uh, member states, Norway, Switzerland, Guinea, Philippines, Ecuador, uh, and Vietnam, which has just uh, now committed to co-sponsor with uh, Rwanda and Peru. Thank you for that commitment. Uh, the next slide. So the purpose of this, uh, uh, of this resolution, as already alluded by the Honorable Minister, is to literally put in place uh, an intergovernment negotiating uh, committee where we're going to go into the details uh, of what uh, the, the, the resolution or the global treaty would look like. Yeah, so that it will establish uh, the open mandate for negotiation and then identify the key elements uh, that can be uh, put together uh, in form of a global response. Next slide, please. Yeah, so um, the approach or the spirit of the draft resolution is to tackle the issue of plastic pollution at the entire life cycle. We, we are basically looking at uh, from the source uh, to how the material, the plastic materials are made. Uh, embedded is the circular economy spirit to make sure that we have the circularity that we need instead of having uh, a plastic uh, pollution in both in water, land, in all environments. And we are not limiting ourselves to any, uh, to any environment, but we are looking at all environments, be it marine or land or even uh, in the air when we look at uh, situations of burning the plastics. The draft resolution has key uh, elements. Uh, we have the shared objective, uh, the main one being uh, uh, plastic, eliminating plastic pollution and promoting the circular economy. Uh, I am aware that uh, negotiators can also think about other objectives, uh, for instance, uh, talking about uh, protecting human health. I think that can come up. It has already been uh, mentioned in this uh, conference. I think that could also be coming up as uh, negotiations go on. And then we definitely need uh, a reporting and monitoring, uh, uh, you know, elements in the in the in the global treaty, uh, because we need to keep track of the evolution of plastic pollution in the environment. Also, to keep track of how circular economy is uh, is uh, growing globally. And then the scientific and technical support. Uh, this is critical because uh, this is the body that could uh, inform uh, the, the decisions that are being made. We want to make decisions based on the findings or the advice of the scientific uh, panel. And then we have uh, a financial and technical assistance. Uh, here we are thinking of uh, financial assistance uh, to cover enabling activities, to assist with reporting, monitoring, developing and uh, uh, development and implementation of national um, action plans. Uh, we are looking at action plans which are ambitious but are also uh, implementable. Next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, path ahead, I think from here we are uh, going to be thinking of submitting the draft resolution to UNEA 2.5 come uh, February 2022, and we are very uh, much looking forward to engage with all parties to exchange views. Uh, we are welcoming co-sponsors uh, to support uh, this draft resolution, resolution so that we do the submission together with all those who have uh, found this uh, resolution helpful and uh, ready to vary behind it uh, when we are submitting it to the UNEA 2.5. Thank you so much, moderator, for that time. Thank you very much for that intervention. Uh, we are now right out of time. We have had uh, two 
solid days discussing the issue, taking it forward. There's been a huge level of uh, engagement and clearly the opportunity exists for um, any and everyone to connect back into the co-conveners as uh, the process moves forward. Um, uh, just to uh, emphasize that the um, the resolution text uh, is now available on the homepage and obviously you can follow uh, any further developments uh, through the conference uh, website. So what I would like to do uh, on behalf of the co-conveners um, is extend an extraordinary vote of thanks to all participants in this conference um, for your highly active par participation. I think uh, we have been almost overwhelmed by the level of desire to engage, uh, which is an extremely positive indicator that this is a key issue with momentum. This will continue forwards. Uh, if I could uh, Thank all the, uh, the WTO, UNEP, and all support uh, staff, our hosts in Switzerland, um, the co-conveners, our translators who have done an extraordinary uh, job for us and will be well ready to stop. But most of all, if I could thank you all for your commitment to this conversation, to this dialogue, and to the journey forwards. Uh, and I now declare this conference formally closed. Thank you very much.